Good morning. Welcome to St. Catherine of Siena Parish, near Price's Corner in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm Father John Hines, pastor. I'm very glad to be with you. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to John. John was in Bethany across the Jordan with two of his disciples. As he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. When Jesus turned around and noticed them following him, he asked them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you stay? Come and see, he answered. And so they went to see where he was lodged and stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. One of the two who had followed him after hearing John was Simon Peter's brother, Andrew. The first thing he did was to seek out his brother, Simon, and tell him, we have found the Messiah, which means the anointed one. He brought him to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon son of John, your name shall be Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. A week ago, he celebrated the baptism of the Lord. Jesus experienced a love of his father in a new overwhelming way, and he was commissioned for his role to redeem humanity. Today, we hear about the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, and we think about people who were called by God to take part in Jesus' ministry to humanity. Monsignor Ralph Martin died this past Tuesday. Some of you knew Father Ralph Martin as your pastor for 14 years, a kind, caring, joyful priest who always remembered your name and gave you his full attention when you spoke with him. You could sense that you were important to Father Martin, and he cared what was happening to you. Whether it was good or bad, great or small, he was concerned and interested. And you sensed that he would help you know God in God's ways. And you also knew that he would lead the community in the right direction. During his time here, you built a new church and expanded St. Catherine School under his leadership. I was blessed to be his friend from the time that we were ordained together. He saw me and knew that we were to be friends before I did. He led me to see God's ways as I hadn't before. He helped me to be a better priest and a better person. It was not by teaching me, but by the way he lived his life and being my friend. Father Martin spent most of his 55 years caring for God's people in parishes. Earlier, he headed the religious de religion department at St. Mark's High School. And after his parish ministry, he helped train seminarians. When he could no longer minister, he retired, and in retirement, his joyful presence was a gift to the staff and the residents, above all, at the Little Sisters residence in Newark. How does a vocation like Father Martin's come into being? In today's gospel, some young men follow after Jesus because their teacher told them, that is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus asks them that crucial question, what are you looking for? They want to know him, about him, who he is. So he says, come, begin to know me. They sought him out, but he was seeking them. For the rest of their life, they would remember this day at four o'clock in the afternoon.
The next day, Andrew brings his brother Simon. Jesus fixes his eyes on him. He sees in Simon what Simon does not yet know about himself. He sees the rock, which means Peter, that Simon will become. Did Simon reply? Did they converse? It doesn't say. We simply know that Jesus saw in Simon what would come to be, a leader who would speak up and risk himself for Jesus. Let's imagine that look that Jesus directed to Simon. He looks at each of us to see the person who we really are. He looks with love that seeks a response. He looked at Simon that day and saw a good man who had become fully committed servant of God's purposes. I am on a journey like Simon. And Jesus must have seen that Simon would have to undergo difficult changes to become Peter, the rock. And yet these changes would fulfill his life by centering him on Jesus, not on himself. I started to say, I'm a Simon. I'm on a journey to become fully who Jesus calls me to be, his faithful representative. When he looks at me, sometimes I have to turn my gaze away because I have not responded to his love. I never doubt his love, but sometimes I am fixed on my own comfort for purposes, not his desire. Or I tell myself, this is beyond my ability. And he reminds me that my grace is sufficient for you. Jesus fixes his eyes on each of us. And he says, you are important to me. And I seek your response. There are certain things I have given you to carry out which are part of my mission. You will do them as a partner with me. They will have to do with your work, your family, your relationships, your parenting, that difficult person in your life, uh, persons you help, sorrows that you must bear. It may have to do with a burden that you're helping someone to carry, or maybe you are responsible for people who work under you as a supervisor or an executive their well-being and even their life's direction will be depend on your faithfulness to Jesus' call. As St. Puts Paul puts it today, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives within you, and he gives you, all of us, his gifts to share with others, gifts like wisdom, counsel, understanding. Jesus' gaze is a gift of love which promises, you are my chosen one. Trust me. Let me work with you. In me, you can do all that I call you to. I am your God and your brother, and I strengthen you. Certain special persons are sent to us to make Jesus' call evident. Father Ralph Martin was this for you and for me. He is now going and yet closer to us than he was. He is fully a part of the resurrected life of Jesus. We give thanks to God for him, and we ask the grace to live out our calling with courage and faith. We entrust the Father with our lives and needs in the same hope as Samuel and the first apostles. That Pope Francis, called to exercise the ministry of Peter in God's church, may inspire by his own example our eager and ready response to Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace in our nation during this, these difficult times. And for our new president, Joseph Biden, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the various ecumenical dialogues between our church and other Christian churches, that they bear witness to the quest for Christian unity in Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate Martin Luther King Day this Monday, let us pray for an end to all forms of discrimination, exploitation, prejudice, jealousy, greed, and hatred, and that people everywhere strive for everlasting peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the sick and suffering be comforted, especially Christian Malgram, Jr., Stephen Felicetti, and for people who are infected with COVID-19 or facing quarantine, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom God has called to eternal life, especially Monsignor Ralph Martin, our friend and pastor, and for Elaine Matos Jackson and all beloved dead, that they may rejoice to remain forever with the Lord whom they served on earth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O faithful God, you know our weaknesses, and yet you never tire of calling us to walk at your side. Graciously answer the prayers we make through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Some announcements. Starting tomorrow, January 18th through the 25th, we celebrate the week of Christian unity. And so I invite everyone to pray this week for the unity among all Christian churches that we seek. Monsignor Martin's funeral mass will be celebrated here at St. Catherine's on Friday, January 22nd at 11 in the morning. Persons interested in attending are asked to call the parish office to ensure that space is available since it will be limited. The funeral mass will be live streamed by our diocese on its webpage. And we will also have videos of the mass during the weeks, uh, days and weeks to come. And so, as we bid farewell in this world to a dear friend and a great pastor and shepherd of the sheep, Monsignor Martin, I wish you a blessed week. And um, again, to children, parents, and teachers, good success in the important work of education. <laughs>